All right, so um, we want to talk about files and see how we read and write from or to files. Um, we are going to only learn um, to deal with text files. For binary files, that's OP345. If you don't know the difference, don't worry, we don't care. Okay? So we need to know how we can actually work with files. So just to show you what an object-oriented language means, I'm going to demonstrate something to you right now. Okay? I'm going to say over here, see out, this is a test. And I'm going to go to new line. Correct? What is C out? What is C out? It's O stream, which means what does it do? It's an object of O stream that is responsible to? Yeah, so it, it's responsible to? To print stuff on the console. That's why it's console out, right? So its job is to print stuff. It represents console. Remember that you are in an object-oriented application, an object-oriented language, which means when you say C out, that's console out object. That's why we call that thing insertion operator. It inserts into count console, and therefore you see on console. So C out is your count console, and you print in it, right? And we learn how to do that. We can manage it. We can left justify, right justify, set with. You know all those things, right? Okay? Yes. Yes. It's, well, it's, not an, it's an object of, um, we call it a manipulator. It's a manipulator, okay? It's, it represents end of line. It's an end of line object that's going to get inserted. So essentially, it translates to backslash n, but it's an object oriented new line. <laughs> Let's put it that way, okay? So, yeah, so um, you can, uh, like, we, we know that we can do stuff like this. Like, I can actually include this was optional, but uh, um, IO manip. So, IO manip holds all the manipulators other than and L and stuff that you see. So, for example, you can, you can say over here, I want uh, to set width to uh, 50 and set fill to uh, um, asterisk and then uh, asterisk and then print this is the test. So essentially you are saying set fill to asterisk, then in width of 50 point, this is a test on console. So you can actually do your manipulations like this. And if, I, and if you run the program, you'll see that it actually prints it that way. So uh, you will see that the output is going to look like something like this, as you see. You see, it, set, it puts this is a test in 50 spaces and sets the empty spaces, uh, fill the empty spaces with asterisk. Are we good with this? Are we okay with this? Okay. So end L is something like that. But it doesn't matter. We can use it the traditional way to write C out dot. So we could actually, instead of doing this, we could say C out dot set width, uh, actually width. Put 50. And then set uh, C out dot fill, and I'm going to put an asterisk, then I'm going to say C out, this, this is a test, and then C out dot fill back to space to make sure if something else I'm going to print later. So you can do it like that. Remember, always put things back they were before. So if you do left justified, make sure you unset it. So if I want it to be left justified, then I have to say over here, C out dot uh, um, set F iOS, iOS left. So that makes it left justified. But after I'm done, I'm going to set the fill back to space. 
and unset left over there. Always do that. Always undo what you have done to put C out back to its normal status. So um, this is a test, and I'm going to say hello. So now everything's going to be perfectly normal when it print that hello is printed, no left and right. And so now this is a test, and it's left justified, and the rest is filled with. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? Pardon me? Oh, you're saying, uh, oh, wh why did I do that? Put set fill over there for a Number, yeah, because I set it to asterisk. I said, so in here, if I, if I write uh, C out set with, uh, sorry, with of, let's say, 20. So let's do it like this. Okay, so in here, I'm going to, let me just put, uh, so before I print that, in here, I'm going to say C out. I'm going to print a bar. So it puts the left one, then this is a test, and then another bar over here. Okay, to show the left and right of that one, and I'm going to do the exact same thing over here. I'm going to say C out after this. I'm going to put a bar over here and set the width to 20 and put another bar. So you know that set width only affects the next printout, right? <clears throat> and then it goes back to normal. Okay, but fill and iOS left uh, set F won't it will keep the value. So we unset it. So now if I actually print this, you will see that the output is going to be like that. So it goes back to what normal is, that it's right justified. And it's space now. If I did not set that one to space, this would have been filled with asterisk too. What I mean is that if you want some print, something to get printed in a specific way, make sure after you applied those specifications, you undo it after so it doesn't affect the rest of the printouts, okay? Things that are uh, permanent. So width is not permanent. Width is only the next, so you don't need to do anything. But fill is permanent. If you set something, set the fill character to something, it stays like that until the program ends. And justification too, if you do left justified, it remains left justified. If you want to make sure it goes back to its default, always undo it. So fill always goes back to space, and any flag you set, you unset it. So it removes it. The reason we unset it is that these are flags. So <clears throat> when you say, I want it to be uh, left justified, one flag becomes like this. When you say, I want it to be right justified, another flag goes up. Okay, so if you remove this one, if you don't unset it, the flag remains one. So you have to make that one to, to, to remove the flag, you unset, and everything goes back to its standard way. But what I'm saying is that, all the point that I'm making over here is this. You see all the things that I printed over here? Okay, so C out represents what? The console, correct? <clears throat> now, in the hierarchy of I.O. Uh, uh, input output in, in C++, this is what we have. So essentially, what you have is this. At the top, you have a class that is called I.O.S. Okay? So that's your input output system. So at top, I.O.S. sitting, at input output system. That iOS has two children. Okay? One, let me make it a little bigger. One, I keep clicking on it. it does, there you go. One here and one here. So these are two children of iOS. One and two. One is, is, is called iStream. The other one is called OStream. So these are the two children of iOS, iStream, and OStream. Privately, 
without anyone knowing behind the scene, they instantiate this somewhere inside. So they create an object of type iStream, they create an instance of type iStream, and they call, inst they call that instance, and the same thing as, o as OStream. So they call an instance of OStream. Okay, so <clears throat> they call this one C in, they call this one C out. Okay, why do they instantiate it? Why they don't let you write iStream ABC and create an instance and start printing in it? Because your terminal input, your screen, and your keyboard are unique things. You don't have, you cannot have three keyboards. That doesn't make sense. You don't have three outputs. That doesn't make sense. Because of that, they say, you do not create it. I'm going to create it privately. So if you try to instantiate iStream, you will see that it won't allow you because actually its constructor is private. You cannot instantiate an iStream, an OStream. But anyways, they did it for us so we can use it. Actually, that C in is fine, but C out, there are more. It's not C out. You have actually more things over here. You have <clears throat> C error and you have C log. These are our outputs. <clears throat> this is something that prints your errors if you want to print an error. This is something that prints your logs if you want to print logs, like log of stuff that why they create, they all print on a screen. Why they did that, in case this fails, you have still a way to print something. If you want to debug, you put it on log, so you can log stuff. So if something goes wrong with C out, your log still gets printed. So, so you have stuff like this, so you can actually set these. You can actually disable C out. You can disable C log. You can print lots of stuff in C log, disable it at the beginning of the program so nothing gets printed. And then you enable it and suddenly all the debugging things are going to get printed. Okay? Anyways, but just have it in mind. So OStream is created in three instances, C out, C error, C log. Forget about these two. C out is our interest. iStream is, in, is in, instantiated into C in, so they create one. Then <clears throat> iStream has a child. The child of iStream is called, it has a child, which means it's another class. OStream has a child too, another class. <clears throat> one child and one child. And this child is called IFStream. And this child is called OFStream. So these two children are children of iStream and OStream. Remember I told you bicycle, motorcycle. It's inheritance. So IFStream knows everything iStream knows. It knows exactly how to print. It knows how to do left justified. It knows how to do right justification. All the things that you have learned in iStream, IFStream knows it too. Um, Sure. So this becomes a su um, this becomes a superset of this. But why superset? This is a parent. This is a child. This is a base class. This is a derived class. Okay. The same thing. This is a base class. O stream. Anything that your C out knows, O F stream knows too. It does all the outputs and stuff. Sorry, I, F I stream is not with. It's re receiving. Like ignore that you have in C in. Uh, and get line that you have, all the functionalities that scene has, IF stream knows it too. All the stuff that O stream knows, OF stream knows too. But these are the children who are dealing the exact same thing you do on your screen, but they do it to a file. So you are not learning anything new. You use them exactly like these, but these are not instantiated because you can have many files on your hard drive. It's not a unique thing. You can have 50 different files. You need to be able to have different instances out of it. And they work perfectly. OK? So, and these two got married, and they have a child together. <laughs> Weird, I know. <laughs> but so these two, they have a child together. Anyways. Um, in object orientation, there is no DNA. You can do whatever you want to do. Uh, 
so so these two so essentially <clears throat> no it's not called iofs it's actually called f stream why because online on un unlike your screen that is not readable it's only for printout and keyboard is not writable you can only read from a keyboard you cannot write anything on a keyboard you cannot read anything from screen you can only write on a screen but a file you can read from it or write into it correct that's why they created this they call it multiple inheritance they inherited OFS stream and I stream into one class that does them both which means in one file that you open you can write into it and you can read from it if you want to we don't deal with that this semester that's next semester okay for now we are just doing this so if that's the case in here for and and then they name the they name the uh, the header file they have named the header file with this so the header file that has all these things in it is f stream so up here all you need to do is to say include f stream okay and obviously because because you, you like c out is to write right i can actually do of stream and call it mm, file out <clears throat> so if you are to write a constructor for a file what would you give to the constructor of the file? There you go, the name of the file. Like if we wanted to design a class for a file, the constructor needs the name of the file, right? That's exactly what it is. So you write OF stream file out, and I'm going to say over, oh, call it, or what do we call it? Uh, say test.txt, right? And I'm just going to have, you see, I'm not doing anything. I'm just changing all these C outs to F out. Because, because OF stream is a child of O stream, it knows everything that C out knows. We know that files have to get opened and then closed, right? They don't need that in object orientation. We have constructed that happens at the beginning of the class, so they automatically open it at the beginning of the class, at the beginning of the life of the life of the object. And it has a destructor. When it goes away, it closes the file. You don't need to worry about it. All you need to do is to run this program exactly how we did, and the output was that, right? If I just run this program, <clears throat> the output will be nothing. Why? Because it created the file. Test.txt. And there you go. Exactly what you printed on a screen goes into the file. Ta-da! So I really don't have anything to teach. You, whatever you did on a screen, you do it in a file. The good thing is that you don't have a stupid user anymore. Like, seriously, they give you a file, you see the format of the file, you know what is the data. You don't have a stupid user say, enter this, no, that's too big, no, this is too small. No, you don't do that. There is a file, you just read from it. If, he, if, if it's not successful, you simply print an error message, bad format, fix your file. Done. There is no user sitting over there. You wanna, so how do we do, like, um, <clears throat> let me... Um, Un momento, por favor. Give me two seconds. Um, I think I have a Simpsons file somewhere. Uh, Simpsons. Come on, come on. No items, really? Um, notes archive. I should have a Simpsons thingy somewhere. Um, I'll do txt, give me a sec. Oh, oh, comma separated value, comma separated value, wait. Comma separated value. Uh, 
I have something like items. I don't know what is that. Let me take a look at it. I'm just going to... Um, There you go. <clears throat> Take a look. You see this? Items in a supermarket. This is their, their uh, SKU. You know what SKU is, right? Like the number that they had, they, 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 the code that they identified them, the thing in a, in a. This is the, this is what they have. Fresh fish, soft Kleenex, ultra tight. Then comma, that's the price. And I don't know what. And the last one is if it is taxed or not. It's, no, it's just a series of files. And the first thing you read is an integer, right? And then you stop at a comma. Then you read something, you stop at a comma. You read something, you stop at a comma. You read something, you stop at, as new, at new line. Right? Right? So if I want to write this file, let me just save it, read this file. Um, I'm not going to put it over there. I'm going to put it in today's session. Is it? Is this? We are, no, NBB. Save. I have a Simpsons file somewhere. I don't know where it is. I have to find it. That is pretty good, actually. Um, yeah. I, I have, or things like Darth Vader and stuff. Did we have something like that? Yeah, that was the last one. It was, it was, it has a file that reads from? But anyways, <clears throat> forget about it. So what happens over here is this. So I want to read this file and, and uh, go to the end of it, right? So that's what I want to do. So it's items.csv and it's right in here. So let me just over here, I'm going to say um, uh, file out. Now let's open a file to read, okay? <clears throat> First of all, let me just um, clear all these things. We don't want it. So in here, <clears throat> instead of having uh, if string, I'm going to have an of string, right? So in here, I'm going to say, <clears throat> oh, uh, sorry about that. <clears throat> so of stream, uh, so if stream, sorry, if stream, uh, let's call it items. Okay, and the file was item.csv, right? Comma separated value. <clears throat> Let me check. Add. Yes. Okay, <clears throat> so that's that one. Now I want to read from it. Okay, so. Um, uh, if I look at my item, let's see what do I have over here. What am I reading? So let's. Uh, so <clears throat> first, I'm reading an integer. So let's call it int. In here, <clears throat> I'm gonna call it uh, SKU. Share. Um, sure. See, I wanted to make it simple. He just ruined it for us. So <clears throat> I'm gonna make a class now. Okay. So class item right and this item of mine has integer s uh, m s k u right what else it has a name that i don't think it's more than 70 characters i'll put 128 so i'm not going to make it dynamic i don't want to go nuts i just want to show you teach you reading from a file okay so 128 so i'm going to say character m name uh 128 right <clears throat> what's the next one price Okay, double M price is a Boolean, right? Taxed. Cool. Bool <laughs> M uh, taxed. Right? Okay, so that's my class, and I want to read the class, right? So public. So in here, I'm going to say, so I'm going to say um, I'm reading, right? So um, let's make it a structure. Or I'm going to write the bad version of it, and then I'm going to write the good version of it, OK? So when we read from what was the read format that we were doing? It was iStream I read and iStream, right? That's what we did, right? So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to say over here, 
if stream read or I'm going to call it load now because I am getting from a file so let's call that load and in here is um, and that returns a reference and in here I have if stream reference file so that's going to load it right and then I have a display we know what display is so I'm going to put o stream reference display uh, o stream reference uh, uh, c out ref and I'm going to make it equal to CR, right? We know all that. Actually, let's make it inline. I'm not going to create a, a, you don't mind if I make it inline, right? I'm going to just implement it right over here. So if I, and this is a file that I'm reading, right? So whatever that file is, I'm going to read from. So if I want to read the SKU, what do I do? How do you read the SKU? With, if it was C in and you had this, what do you do? You just do C in into an integer. It reads until it can't anymore, right? Which stops at comma, correct? Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Instead of C in, I'm going to go file. Exactly like C in. And I'm going to say over here, MSKU. Right? Now, after that, what do I do? I'm at the comma, right? I don't want that comma. How do we ignore? So I'm going to say file.ignore. Ignore one character and you're done. I don't care what it is. I couldn't read. I'm going to stop. Now I have to read up to something. What did that? Get line, right? Get line. So I'm going to say get line file dot get line. And we know that get line receives the string, so m name. And I'm going to say how many? 128. And I stop at comma. And I know that get line extracts it, so I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to ignore after that. We know that get line extracts that one, right? So it receives, huh? It's it away. It throws it like spit it, it spits it out, <laughs> something like that. Okay. So now, now I'm at this at this stage, right? What is the next thing I'm reading? A double, and it's gonna read up to comma and stop. So I'm gonna say file read into m price <clears throat> correct and then it stops at comma so i'm going to ignore i'm going to say file dot ignore so it ignores that comma now i'm going to read one boolean correct okay <clears throat> um Booleans are like integers. So let's see if, if I can actually read it just like that and 0 and 1, it sets it or not. We'll find out, right? Okay. So now in here, I'm going to say file m text. So read it into text. And it's going to stop at what? New line, right? And the next one who wants to read an integer, what does it do? So if it goes to next one, it has a backslash n. I can just flush it and stop and at light. I can flush it and stop at backslash n. How do we did that? File dot ignore, right? Internal ignore <clears throat> thousand characters and backslash n. What do you like? Two thousand? You name it. I just put a big number over there. I don't know. It's like if it goes more than a thousand, it's gonna fail, and we know that it failed. It means if somebody, if it's something over here that it could read it, it's gonna keep reading one thousand characters until it hits backslash. In. Most definitely, it's gonna be the first one. But if it's not, see, the thing is that because it's a file, I don't care. If it can't read, file is going to fail, correct? And I'm just going to tell them, fifth record failed. You have a corrupted file. Fix it. I'm just going to, if I'm kind enough, I'm just going to tell them that it failed at certain record so they can count and see which one is wrong. Okay? So then after this, I'm going to return that file. Return file. Oh, right? Correct? And display, well, we do a display. Let's, uh, 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna print everything in a, in a line. So I'm gonna say over here I'm gonna say uh, uh, C out ref. I'm gonna say C out ref. Uh, what do I print? I print M name, right? And uh, comma. Um, oh, in parentheses in front of it, I'm gonna put this SKU. So in here M SKU. Right? I'm not doing any validation, people. You know we can do all that, but uh, I'm, just, uh, I'm just doing it. So, and then the price, I'm going to put the price. So for price, I'm going to put a comma. And for price, I'm going to say C out ref dot uh, set F iOS uh, fixed, right? As I want to do the precision thingy, c out dot c out ref dot precision um, two. I want to have two uh, uh, digits after the decimal. Now I'm going to say c out ref <clears throat> print the price. Price. Okay. Print the price, and then after price, I need to show how much tax it is, right? Uh, so in here I'm going to say uh, C out, and in here I'm going to say <clears throat> tax. C out ref. <clears throat> so how do I do the tax? I'm going to say. So what is the tax? Tax is M price multiplied by zero one one three, right? That's the that's the tax, right? But um, it should be, if the tax is zero, it should be zero, correct? If the tax is one, it should actually print the value. So I'm going to multiply it by M tax. If tax is one, it has no effect. But if it's zero, it's going to make everything zero. Yeah, why do I write an if statement? Use a little math. It's good for your health. Okay? Return. Uh, oh, and obviously, I'm not going to go to new line. I'm going to say return uh, C out ref. Ref. Okay? Now, <clears throat> you want me to overload an insertion and extraction or call the functions? Which one? <laughs> He's the, he, is, he is your representative. <laughs> so how many people want me to write uh, the overloads? How many people want to end the class and go home now? No? <laughs> no one? OK, I don't get What is Boolean? What is true or false? Ta-da. Integers, so right? If it's one, one multiplied by anything oh, is that. So if it's one, then it's going to multiply that price so by zero. If, it, if it's one, it's going to multiply whatever the tax is to one, which is no difference. Right? The result will be, so if the tax is 59 cents, it's 59, 59 cents multiplied by 0 0.59, multiplied by one is 0 0.59. But if tax is false, it's zero. Whatever the value as you multiply by zero becomes zero. I'm reading ones and zeros, and I'm hoping that it's going to convert it to a Boolean. We'll find out. OK. <laughs> yes. Okay, fixed, it means I want a fixed for, see, C out has a mind of its own. When you are printing a value, a double value, it chooses the best format that it finds fit. I don't want that. I want it to be one format and remain that. Oh. That is fixed. So in here I'm saying, I want it to be fixed, and it should be any value that you are doing, it should be the value with two digits after the decimal point. That's it. Yes. Doesn't, yeah. I don't know. 
logically I do that because I want to set it fixed and then set the precision. Do it the other way, see if it works. See, questions like that never comes to my mind. I'm like, why do I do that? <laughs> so, let's try it. Try it and let everyone know. Hey, by the way, you can put it afterwards. I think, I think as long as you do it, as long as you do it before printing, you're good. Okay? Because they're all flags that you're setting. Right? You see, the precision, um, now I'm just thinking logically. Precision does not do the printout for you. Printout is happening with the extra insertion operation, correct? So in here, you're just saying how to. So it doesn't matter which direction, I think. Anyways, <clears throat> so to overload the, yes. Which one? Yeah, because get line by nature extracts the delimiter and throws it away. If it was get, then that's a different story. Now you have to have ignore. <clears throat> because get line is receiving a line, it assumes that you're going to get the backslash and throw it away, or whatever it is. If, if you call the get function, then you need to have ignore afterwards. Now I have to have ignore in here. But because I don't want that, I, I have get line, why do I bother? And the good thing is that get line will fail if it reaches the limit. Get doesn't. Get line fails. I want it to fail if the thing is too big. So I'm using get line. Get doesn't fail when it reaches. It fills it and continues. Get line, if it doesn't reach to the delimiter before this size, it will fail. And I want it to fail. So get line is what I like. OK, <clears throat> so now let's overload. So now the funny thing is that my name is Fardad. My last name, my father's last name is Solimandu, right? So you can call me Mr. Solimandu, right? Instead of Fardat, correct? Are we are okay with this? All right. Now, in object orientation is a very funny thing. My father actually used to be a teacher too. He used to teach mechanics, okay? The funny thing is that if, it, if our world was like the computer's world, I would know exactly how to teach mechanics because my father knew, right? I'm inheriting everything from my father. But I improved or changed the teaching method to C++. So in an object-oriented world, if you call me Farda to teach, I'm going to teach C++. But if you tell Mr. Soleiman to teach, my father kicks in. Then I'm going to start teaching mechanics. You got it? So you can do the exact same thing. So you can actually call and use iStream, that is mother of ifStream. You can use the mother's name. OK? But the thing is that, the thing is that I went too far. The reason is that if I, if I want to tell you what's going to happen, um, then I have to talk about, let me, let me tell you, why, why not, okay? <clears throat> so if you call, Mr. So call me Mr. Soliman, I'm going to teach you mechanics, right? Unless the teaching skill of mine, okay, is an upgradable one. You can actually make a method to be upgradable. We're going to learn after the uh, study break. You can say this method is upgradable, which means if you call me Mr. Soleimandu, but I am Fardad, not my father, right? C++ looks in me and takes a look at my teaching skill. Is it upgradable? If yes, it calls the latest one. So I'm not going to teach you mechanics, even if you call me Mr. Soleimandu. I'm going to teach you C++. If the method was not set to be upgradable, then it was mechanics. You'll learn later on how, okay? But that's the thing. iStream's read 
Extra extraction is an upgradable one. So even if you call IF stream using its father's name or mother's name, the latest one will be called, which means it's going to actually call the IF streams read, which is called reading from a file. That's why all the things that you overloaded in previous workshops, you did iStream, but I read and write from files with it. Remember that? Or you didn't maybe notice. <laughs> but you will see all the things that you are using. <clears throat> I'm asking you just overload the iStream to do this. And I'm not telling you, but I'm using that to read from file. Because the action of reading is upgradable in iStream, the latest version of it will be called, which means if you tell Mr. Soli Manlu, C++ comes and takes a look at me, says, okay, he wants to teach. This is teaching mechanics. But wait, teaching is upgradable. Do I have another teach after this? Looks at it. Yes, there's a new one that teaches C++. So I'm going to call that one the latest version one. Okay? Well, anyways. Yeah, but it's got to be hello world in a file. Yeah, but anyways. So, doesn't matter. Let's go through it, and I'm going to uh, overlook it. That was just something about the workshop. So when you're looking in a workshop, I'm telling you to overload for iStream, and I am reading from a file, and I'm doing OStream, and I'm writing into a file. Remember I told you, always make sure that you make the object pass through the function? That was the reason. If you use C out over here, and if you don't have this one, and instead of C out reference, you use C out, then it's not upgradable anymore because it's C out. But if you make it a reference, somebody puts an OF stream instead, then this reference becomes the reference of OF stream, therefore upgradable, therefore it's going to work for a file. Anyways. But back to the business we had. Let me just first do this thing using, using the file. Okay, so, so I have file items over here, and I'm gonna create um, I'm gonna create a class item, and I don't even have a default because but uh, it let, let me just have a default constructor over here. Um I don't need to, I'm just gonna eh, forget it. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to say over here, uh, what was the thing? The name was items, right? Item, right? Item or items? It's item. Item I. So that's the one, right? Now in here, I'm going to say while I dot load from items. Okay. How, how can I say that? Because I'm returning items itself, right? So after this is done, items will sit over here. Uh, items file will sit over here. And that's a child of C in, correct? You could say while C in, correct? Or I could do this. While. Oh, let me make your life easier. While I want to, and I'm going to fix it. Fail, not. Okay? That's more descriptive. While items is not in a fail mode, I dot load. Okay? And I'm going to put items here. Okay? After I'm loading, I have to check to see if again failed or not. Now I'm going to say if items dot fail I'm going to say see out reached got to end of the file okay otherwise I'm going to say I dot display and go to new line and that's it I don't need to do anything else no, it overwrites because I, the beautiful question. This is not a class with resources. I don't need to have rule of three for it. I don't need copy construction or anything. It overwrites the old values over and over. It over. So I, if if it was dynamic, then I had to have 
set and copy constructor and in my read in my load I had to deallocate reallocate doing all those stuff I'm not doing that so now if I run the program now and we're going to walk through it and see what happens so it comes right in okay so it comes right in as you see I let's actually add that I to watch what garbage to watch add to watch okay so now it's added to watch which means I can actually see what I have inside and as you see it's all garbage now it comes in here creates the iced items if it didn't fail which means the file exists now it says load from items it goes to items reads as if cn the first thing it reads is 275 because it's reading from a file ignores the next one reads the next one which is fresh fish and stops at comma then reads the next one which is price that is twelve dollars and thirty four cents then ignores the uh schmiggly dinghy over here the comma and then after that reads the tax and hallelujah it read false so that's correct and then it says ignore backslash n return the file comes over here and if it didn't fail, it comes to display. Goes to display, prints everything out, and it fails. What happened? What happened? It should have printed. What happened? Hmm. Oh, I think I know. There you go. Sorry, I had that. Uh, I had something. So it says fresh fish. So puts the fresh fish in 275 over there. Let me put this at right. And we don't need this one out right now. I'm going to put this one at left and, and show this one. And then it's going to uh, set the uh, set the precision, print the price and tax. It's going to be zero right now it reads the next one goes over here reads the next one didn't fail that's soft Kleenex and this one is actually taxed because it was one and it keeps going like that so everything is going to be red and it keeps going magic broom <laughs> okay dark chocolate organic banana fish not fresh one Kleenex tide display broom soap come on cookies so many and milk and seriously chocolate how many things did we have banana got to the end of the file done as soon as it hits the file it fails and now we know it fails now it comes out over here and the destructor destroys it it gets closed automatically and we read it so as you see it's much much simpler than using f open all those stuff all you need to do is to create an instance of if stream and treat it as c in and assume that the person sitting over there is not actually stupid they actually will type what you want them to type yes oh, items.txt scv items scv csv items csv items so i'm not understanding the question i presume do you know what that means? Okay. no okay. no no we just mentioned because you only have one screen okay. they don't let you create the c out yourself they create it for you it's always there that's why you have C out. With files, you can have 50 different files. So because you can have 50 different files, then you have to name it yourself. So you name it I, I named the file items in here. So my C out is items. Now, for example, you want to copy a file? We can do it like this. Let's copy a file. So, so this one is a dash file in 
Now, as practice, go and overload the operators for this. So you can actually do, instead of, like, you can actually do a CN instead of doing that. You can actually say items and then, you know, like, like you do with CN. You can actually do it like that. Oh, if that's the case, then you have to close and reopen the file. Oh. And guess what? You have a function for it. So you write items.close, it closes the file, so you don't you close it. Then it says item.open. What do you have to give to open? Uh, uh, new file. The new file name. So what I could have done was this. So instead of passing it to a constructor, I could have used the default constructor of items, which means it's a file with nothing in it. Now I could say items.open, and I put that one over there. Same. But if I would have written the thing, I would have a constructor that accepts an argument, and I open the file. And they did it. So you can do it, and you can even have more stuff over here after to see, open it as binary, open it as this. And you can mention many things after this. So there are different types of constructors, but for now, we are just dealing with this. So yeah, so if I wanted to open another one in here, so if I wanted to, yeah, yeah. So in here, I would do like uh, items dot close. And then items again, dot open. Usually we don't do this because it's an object oriented. It's not a function thing to keep using the same file. You, you use three objects and each one of them is pointing to their own thing. Why you are creating the same one? Don't go back to IPC. If you have a Simpsons file, then create IF, IF stream Simpsons for that one. And you have two different ones. Okay. No, I presume. So I'm going to just comment this, and instead I'm just going to put the item.fstream thingy over here. So in here I'm going to say, okay, so we don't need that, okay? I'm going to say constructor will do this, constructor will do this, and destructor, destructor will do this. So if I told you, it, uh, sadly, we don't have this in a test, but if I told you uh, in a test, um, yeah, if I told you in a test, write a program that copies a file, nothing could be easier than that, like two seconds. Okay, so if I want to actually uh, write a program that actually copies a file, what do I do? In here, I need two files, right? So I'm going to say character source, say 256. That's 156, 256. And then I'm going to have character destination. That's the, these are the file names, 256. Okay, then I'm going to say see out. Enter source file. Obviously, I'm going to have cn.get line uh, into source and 256 and backslash n. It, it's going to extract it. So look at my source. <laughs> source file. Okay. And enter destination file. And in here, it's going to be destination. OK. Now, how do I copy it? I'm going to say character uh, ch. I'm going to say while. Oh, I have to open it. So first, I have to open the two files. So in here, what am I going to do? I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say if stream uh, source file. And I'm going to make it source 
okay? OF stream for destination file, I'm going to make it destination, okay? Okay? So I'm, or call it F source, F destination, that's too long, and I'm not a good typist, so, okay? So that's file source and file destination. Now in here, I'm going to say, first, what I'm going to do over here, make it like, uh, um, understandable for the for the make it user friendly so I'm going to say if f not f source because I know that exclamation mark is overloaded it's going to return that it's not fail so I'm going to say if it if it fails see out uh, could not find or open could not open and in here I'm going to say source right and do the exact same thing for destination, uh, for F destination, and in here, destination. So if it doesn't open, then I'm not going to do anything. Then in here, I'm going to say while, while, F source, F source, and F destination. So while the two are successful and everything is good and fine and dandy, okay? Now I'm going to say F source into CH, right? That's the source, uh, IF stream, right? Yeah. IF stream. Yeah, so why is it giving me an error in here? Let me see. Oh, I didn't have character CH. Okay, F source into that one. And F and F destination CH. Done. Read from that character by character, put it in there. It's going to, as soon as it can't read anymore, it's going to fail. Yes. If it cannot open the file for output for any reason, your disk is full, the path is incorrect, anything that you write over there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fail. And I want to make sure the while doesn't happen. And obviously, this write over here must only happen because the last one, you're going to have two characters, okay? So in here, I have to say, if F source was successful, write it. That's a better one. And I run the program. Oh, <laughs> it's down here. <laughs> okay. All right. So now I run the program. I'm going to say items.csv. Destination file, I'm going to say... Mm he ha dot txt okay and save it yeah no so if i look at here i'm going to have a he ha dot txt that has the exact same thing what is my mistake huh why it didn't get the new line because because this CN thingy that I have, when it starts reading, it skips all the white spaces, right? So that didn't read that. So when it comes to, so I can't use that one. I'm going to use another one. No. Same. Or even this get. They are both the same. There you go. Now it's going to read only one character. Yes. <laughs> fget is in standard input output header file. It's a C thing. Fget s. That's that, that's from that's in that's that's for file, but it's from long. It's for C. This is C plus plus. Fget. They didn't teach you. It's there. Fget s is to get a string. F get is to get one character, but forget about it. F get C. F get C, yeah. Yeah, anyways. Anyway, so, uh, so um, now if I run the program, hopefully the copying is going to be uh, good. So in here, I'm going to say items.csv, and I'm going to say good.txt, and take a look at it. Good.txt is done perfectly.
Okay, it gets one character writes one character. And if I don't, and if I put something that is wrong, could not find the file thingy. And it's not going to even talk about that. Actually, the second one got created. So I'm going to have a file with it called SS ASDF on my computer right now. So if, <laughs> so if I actually look at this, probably I have an ASDF file that is there we go. <laughs> it got created. So that's another bug. So I have to fix that. So what do I do in here in my program? I'm going to say uh, um, this is the destination, right? So I'm going to use the open for the destination. So in here, I'm going to say if f source, then f destination dot open destination. Otherwise, don't open it. I keep fixing it. <laughs> yes. That what, what, what? Give me line number first. Line 20. Operator overload? Four. What, what to overload? No, it, it, F source is 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 IF stream. So anyway, so now hopefully it's going to be okay. So let me see if actually it works or, or I just screwed it up. So in here I'm going to put uh, garbage dot txt and destination file whatever. Okay, could not for open. I want to see if I have whatever created over here or not. Good, I don't have whatever. Uh, so now I'm going to run it one more time. Now I've, I'm going to say I, I'm going to say uh, prg.cpp, and in here I'm going to say my program.cpp, and create it. And now I should have a copy of this actually called my program.cpp. There we go. Right. Easy breezy, so you can do all these good stuff now. So it, it, it's, the sky is the limit, right? Like you can do anything, like you just look at any file that you have, look what the format is, take your good time, write a one-liner to read one line for you, and then put it in a loop and you read the file. It overwrites. But of course you can add things so it doesn't. So you can tell to constructor append. You can tell to constructor uh, fail if, it's or if it already exists. Um, do not override. You can say write at end. Um, you can many things. Yeah. Because I want to read every single character. I don't want any character to be. Yes. That when we use the extraction operator, the extraction operator, when you have, when you have such a thing in, in, so if you have A, extraction operator will, will pick up A. But when you have space, 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 A, and you're standing here, you go C, C into CH, because it's space, it's going to skip everything until it reaches to non-space. Then it picks up A. So four sk spaces are skipped. Get says, I don't care what type of character, I'll read it. Which means get is going to read only a space, where extraction operator will skip the white space until it hits something to read. Yes. No, get will receive one space. In next loop, it's going to get the next one. In next loop, so four loops are going to pass until it gets to A. It reads a single character. Unconditionally. You remember, extraction operator is made for keyboard. Okay? You can use it for file when you want to, when you know what is the format of the file. Yes, exactly. Yes. And that program is called the compiler. And it does a recursive algorithm. It tokenizes your file, finds out what is the, and tells you if the format is correct or not.
That's called a compiler. Go to university, learn how to write a compiler. That's one of the subjects, actually, that you learn. Compiler design. Yeah. How to write C compiler. I actually wrote one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's one of parts of the university thing. No, no, anybody, everybody does that. They teach you how to write a compiler. Yeah, it's, it's not... Guys, uh, when you look at a building, it looks very complicated thing. But piece by piece, there are simple things. So when you learn how to put all the bricks together, you can make a house. It takes time, but it's easy. If you follow instructions, everything's easy. Okay. Anyways, all right, any questions? So I seriously don't have anything to teach for files because we taught C in and C out to you. Anything you did with C in and C out, do it with files. The only difference is that your output will be captured in a file and the input is already for you formatted in a file so you can look at the file and see how to read it. And Oh, a pet next semester. But I think there is, <clears throat> there is stuff over there. So uh, if, you want, if you want to be appended to the file, so when you are, uh, mm, uh, so let me just put that file copy thingy over there. Copy file. I'm going to open the previous one that we have, and I'll show you. So. Um, so if I want it to be appended to it every time, then I have to say iOS append. Append? It means every time it adds it to the bottom of the next one. It doesn't destroy, it doesn't overwrite the file. It opens the file and adds it to the end of the file. So the file grows bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes. Didn't get it? Okay, so, so, Remember what the output was, fi testfile.txt? Where is it? Right? You see that? Oh, cancel, cancel, cancel. What did I do? So I'm going to copy this. You don't need to learn this, but because you asked the question, uh, I'm just letting you know. So now if I run the program, that's once, twice, three times, four times, okay? It appends it to the bottom of the other one. You see? I ran it four times, five times, you see it five times over there. So I told the constructor to open the file for appending, not for overwrite. When you don't mention anything, it's overwrite. When you, and there are many other things. You don't need to know it now. We'll talk about it later. But uh, there are lots of possibilities. For it. Okay, Many different things you can do. I'll remove it because that's not a part of the things. That you, just for now, we'll give you a file. You open the file. You read. You create another file out of that one. You don't need to go edit any file and do anything in it. Okay? And we don't want you to append. I want you to overwrite so you can see what happens. That's the baby steps. Uh, any questions? Suggestions? Objections? Any questions about midterm? OK, go ahead. Questions? Midterm. So midterm is going to be in, in three, uh, four parts, OK? Part number one is uh, I, I will post a message with all these details on Teams, on Microsoft Teams. So you'll see it, but let me tell you. It's in person unless you have, it's being recorded. Yes, so it, it's in person unless you have medical reasons, some accommodation, thank you, you have to talk to me, okay? I had somebody said I'm much more comfortable at home. Can I do it at home? The answer is no. 
you can't do that. It has to be a valid reason. It's not a, I would like to have it at home. Can No, you can't do that. Okay? It is in person. You have to come and sit behind, behind the computer right in front of me. Unless, okay, if you are a student with accommodation, automatically everything's going to be one and a half time for you. So, and if you are a student with accommodation, talk to me so I can arrange a time, a place for you to go and do your test. Okay? Whichever you, you prefer. If you like to do it on your own, do it on your own. You can bring your own. Sure, of course. No difference. Yes. You mean uh, Visual Studio? You can use anything you want. It doesn't matter. You can use anything you want. You can Google, you can do whatever you want. You, you are so much tight in time. Okay, we are certain rules. I'm going to go through it. You'll see it doesn't apply. It doesn't matter if I told you. So, so let's. So, first of all, you have concept questions, right? It's multiple choice, yada, yada, yada. So, if you have 10 questions, you have 10 minutes. Each question has one minute. You go through it and you answer. So, that's multiple choice. Okay? Then, after that, you have walkthrough. Walkthrough is fit in the blanks. One small piece of code with one answer underneath, and they're like, Maybe two or three of them, I'm going to give it to you, OK? And uh, with a short answer underneath, each one has two minutes. So let's say six minutes for three of them, OK? So you Google. By the time you Google, the time is passed, you're done, OK? So you have to do it yourself. So those are the ones. And each one has a separate time. So you are literally doing three or four tests. You open the first one, you finish, then you open the second one. So you open the first one, you do the concept, you finish, close it, you open the second one that is walkthrough. You do the second one, the walkthrough, you finish, you close it, then you go to debugging. What is debugging? I'll give you a piece of code in two formats. One is an image with line numbers beside it. The other one is a text that you can copy. Either you can recognize, and this piece of text will have few mistakes in it. Either you can recognize it by eye, just simply tell me which line. So these are the things you're going to tell me. Which line number? What is the problem in your own words? How to fix it? You give these three things, and that gives you five marks for each mistake. So if there are five mistakes in it, it's 25 marks. OK? Or you can copy the copyable text into Visual Studio, compile it, and try to fix it and see what is wrong with it, if you choose to. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I'll let you know when it comes up. Hmm. Mock test? That's difficult. You know how difficult it is? It's, 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 to design a test, I haven't designed the first one yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. Like, if I design a question, I want to use it for the test. But uh, any walkthrough you can do, like the things that you see in a quiz. So all the quizzes up, I think. All your quizzes are available now. Look at them. There are walkthroughs in there. That's your walkthrough. OK? So, that, so you can copy the text and put it in Visual Studio and see what the mistakes are. But there's a catch for it. First of all, the line number of the error must be the line number in the image, not in your Visual Studio. Because you put it and reformat it, the line numbers change. OK, so the one that is in the image, you've got to give me that one. Number two, if you copy the error message and paste it as what is wrong, the whole mark becomes zero. Everything becomes zero. And in two seconds, I can recognize it's a compiler error message. Believe me. OK? So see what the error is and explain it with your own words. So if it tells you um, illegal operation, you've got to tell me the pointer was not uh, uh, initialized and accessed, and therefore it failed. Something like that. Or you didn't allocate and use it. Or there is a memory leak because you reused it without setting it, without deleting it. Things like that. You don't give me error message for your compiler. From your compiler, you give me the error message that uh, you, like, if, for example, I put something in private and try to access it. Of course, your compiler is going to say inaccessible, yada, yada, yada. You have to, in your old words, say this is supposed to be uh, 
public, but you made it private, put it in a public area. That's it. And you get your five marks. Okay? But in your own words, I want your words. So that's that. So that's about debugging. Okay? And the last one is programming, where I give you a class that is incomplete and needs a piece so you can actually do, do it. So I'm going to give you a class and I'm going to say overload the extraction operator to print it. Let's see how you do it. So the class is there and I ask you to do that. Or um, do the insertion operator. Or overload the plus operator that does this. Only one thing to write. Okay? And you're going to have like three or four of these. Each one, 10 minutes. Uh, to go through it, okay? Um, you get mark, partial mark for every single thing that you write over there. But go through the mock-up test, learn how to put the thing. Did you go through the mock-up test? Do you know what the mock-up test is? No? Right? Go to your uh, My Seneca thingy. So open the course. Oh, it's here, actually. Open the open open Blackboard. Go to <clears throat> this is uh, NBB uh, NBB. So go to NBB NBB. Go to NBB. Click on midterm tests. Dry run mock-up test. Okay. Open this one up and do it and learn how it's done. Okay? So how to do it? You restart the test. I actually put a YouTube video over there to show you how it's done. So if you can't do it, then I'm sorry. Okay? It's even, but I'm showing it to you now, so this is being recorded too. So what you do when you're actually submitting code, what do you do? You develop it proper, probably in Visual Studio or something. So I want to submit this code. First, you organize it properly. Remove comments, things that you don't want. It becomes presentable. Do Control K, Control D to format it. It formats it for you. Make sure everything is good and copy it. Copy, right? Then you go to your test. You click on Insert Code. Insert Edit Code Sample. You click over here. You select C++. You paste it here, and you save. The outcome will be perfectly formatted like that. And if you don't trust it, click on Preview. It shows you how I see it. OK? If it's anything less than that, I will not mark it. It's not a difficult thing to do. I'm just telling you to paste your code properly so I can see what you have done. So indent it properly, use whatever. Anything you put and save and submit, and as soon as you save and submit your code, it shows you what you submitted. <clears throat> if you can read this, if you can read this, it means I can read it. Okay? <clears throat> so, what, so, what causes me not to mark your code? Number one. You give me a code that is not readable, especially if I see you have multiple spaces between your lines. All of you who copied from others last semester, you know that happens when you do it. Because you copy from a web page that is copied from a web page that is copied from a web page. Each web page that does, it adds a new line. And when you add it, you're going to see one line, three spaces. Another line, three spaces. Something like that comes in, gone. And immediately I'm going to find that where you come in. Got it? You know, what you Google, I can just copy that paste and Google it, and the source comes up. I know exactly where you copied it from. It's very easy. If you search for it, I can do it too. Okay? Careful with that. Okay? Cheating, I don't go through it at all. I mean, like, if I see you cheat, I'll get you, and I'll make sure you fail the subject, even if you do it in a workshop. I know that's not supposed to happen. I'll make sure it happens. I'll try to, I'll give you extension for any workshop you want. I give you every opportunity to do the work yourself if you, and I even tell you, you can copy it from someone else. If you tell me you copied it, you're okay. Okay? So, so I give you all the opportunity to be honest. If you dishonest, then I'm sorry. Now, number uh, three. If the answer to the question does not exactly relate to the question that I ask, I don't give you any partial marks. That's zero. 
If I ask you to create the plus operator for this class, you create a perfect multiplication operator. For it, you get zero. I, but if, you, if I ask you to create a plus operator, you just put a plus and nothing else, I'll give you mark for that. So anything you, you give me will get partial marks. I guarantee that. Okay? But well, please, please, just answer what I ask you and you'll be fine. Okay? Yeah, please don't cheat. And that's it. Okay? And I'll try to make it, I promise I'll try to make it as simple as possible. I just want to see if you know the concept. How you write your code, you're going to prove it in a project. And when the project comes up, you're going to see. Project is something you're going to have to work six weeks on it to complete it. It's a huge, huge application to write. Okay? I don't know yet. Okay. No, no. It's, it's, you can work in groups, but you have to cite. And the parts that you co copy from each other, you're going to lose mark for it. Okay? So if you certain piece of your work doesn't work, no worries. Ask from someone else. You only use, and it's like you use 2%. Because the project is so big, when you get a piece, you just use 2% of your work. You get 98% instead of 100. Who cares? Right? So that's that. Yeah, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Okay. Um, yes. Only first five weeks. Whatever you see in the topics of first five weeks, that's what you're having. Week number one to five. Anything you see over there will be on the test. And nothing other than that. So anything from IPC 144 till week five will be on your test. Okay? <clears throat> I don't think... Um, just look at this weekly schedule and you'll see. So uh, there's not going to be any... Copy constructors, there are not going to be any uh, input-output operators. I'm not going to ask you the thing that I told you, overload the insertion and extraction operator, it's not going to be on the test because that is on week six, input and output operators. But other operator overloads, you will. Cast operators will be there. Index operator will be there. Things like that will be there. Uh, construction and destruction will be there. Member functions and privacy will be there. So anything right down to this point. Hmm? I didn't teach in this operator. Didn't I do an array in your class? Yes, integer array. Yeah, that was in the index operator. That's, that's part of operators. I taught it late, but it's part of your week five. So take a look. If there is no index operator in week five, I'm not going to do index operator. Take a look at the topics. I, th I don't think it is. Whatever topic that is in week one to five, that's what you're going to. All right? Are we good? What happened? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, if you see it in week five, I'll ask, okay, if you don't see that one. All right? Are we good? All right. Where is your lab? There you go. 